Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachachachwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a response to a statement uh, made by a member of the IUIC in this video, centered around the calendar, all right, that the Messiah himself, all right, and the Jews who were following at the time Yahweh Shai was on the scene, all right. Now we understand that the Jews, those of the circumcision, all right, were ultimately those who had remained keeping the customs, keeping the laws, all right. When you understand the Jews that were around when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, all right, they ultimately stem from, all right, the uh, survivors going back to the Maccabean revolt in the book of Maccabees who didn't fall away from their customs, all right. As a matter of fact, let's get a scripture real quick in the book of Maccabees. We'll get a first Maccabees chapter two. OK, and this was pretty much the mindset of those uh, those uh, Jews, you know, who ultimately have fought to keep the law, statutes and commandments. All right. Including how to keep, you know, the new moon and the holy days. All right. Because there's even holy days uh, that were established in the book of Maccabees. But when you get first Maccabees chapter two, as we know, many Israelites fell away from their customs. All right. Um, the mindset behind, you know, Mattathias and his son, you know, Judas Maccabees and the other sons and those who joined themselves into them. All right. Was ultimately. Verse 19. All right. First Maccabees, chapter two and 19. Then Mattathias answered and spake with a loud voice, though all the nations that are under the king, uh, the, the king's dominion obey him. And fall away, all right, another falling away, as the chosen seed always constantly falls away when you look at the narrative of the scriptures. Everyone from the religion of their fathers, all right, and all of the heathen who were under that, you know, Greek dominion, you know, were Hellenized. But the Bible specifically follows the Jews who were Hellenized and fell away to the idols of the, the Greeks, all right. And what was the next empire? that came in, in, in into power was the Romans, all right? This is ultimately, when you read Daniel the seventh chapter, the Greeks was that third beast, all right? Likened unto a leopard, see? Before the fourth beast, which was the Roman Empire, all right? Now, again, Mattathias answered and said, though all the nations that are under the king's dominion obey him and fall away every man from the religion of their fathers and give consent to his commandments. Yet will I and my sons and my brethren walk in the covenant of our fathers. All right. They're going to walk in the covenant of their fathers. OK, it says, God forbid that we should forsake the law and ordinances. All right. We will not hearken to the king's word to go from our religion. And what was the Jews religion? All right. The law, statutes and commandments, the the holy days and everything else, how to keep the new moon and Sabbaths was a part of that. All right. Because ultimately, when you read this story, they were ultimately telling the Jews, you couldn't profess yourself to be a Jew. You couldn't keep the Sabbath. All right. But you had a remnant. All right. Start with Mattathias, who's the father of Judas, Ma Judah, Judah Maccabees. All right. That said, ultimately, we're going to stick. All right. We're going to stick. We're not going to hearken to the king's word to go from our religion or the, the law, statutes, commandments, our worship. All right. Either on the right hand or on the left. So they stuck. All right. To the uh, commandment. All right. Given by Solomon in the book of Proverbs. Don't go to the to the, the left or the right. Stay straight on the path. All right. So when you deal with what happened here. All right. These Jews. All right. They continued to circumcise their children all right they continued to keep the holy days some of them were caught you know and, and and put to death by the greeks but the lord allowed a remnant to continue all right leading into the roman empire all right you have a uh, group of jews 
of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, all right, you, you can go and look up the Hasmonean dynasty leading to the time that Yahweh Shai came on the scene. When Yahweh Shai came on the scene, real quick, so we can give you an understanding of what we're getting ready to go into, all right, he was born into a family, all right, who were keeping the laws, all right, who, who, who did not fall away. They were of that stock of Judah who remained faithful to the ways of righteousness, right? Luke, the second chapter in the 21st verse. And when the eighth days were accomplished, Yahweh Shai presented at the temple. And when the eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Yahweh Shai. And when you read the story of John the Baptist, he himself was circumcised on the eighth day. All right. Showing you that this family, all right, these families didn't fall away like the Gentile heathen Israelite foreigners, all right, who had ultimately been raised by their parents and their parents were raised by their parents as actual heathen and Greeks, but they're still Israelites, all right. This remnant of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, all right, stuck to the traditions of their fathers, all right, getting into what we're getting ready to listen to this uh, individual from IUIC say that when Yahweh Shai was on the scene, all right, they followed the, the Julian calendar. All right, that's what we're getting ready to get into. But I wanted to give you a backdrop before we actually listen to him so you can understand why we're making these arguments. We're not just arguing to argue. All right, these dudes are really going off and lying to you. All right, and it's dangerous because it's associated with idol worship. And again, even uh, Bishop Nate himself told you, all right, that many men in the old schools got, got paid to change things. And we're, he, he himself is a clear example of that. All right. And our hope is that you all repent, but we know that pride, all right, goes before man's fall. Now, the, it says here, when the eight days were accomplished, all right, for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Yahweh Shai, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. See? So according to the law of Moses, all right, was how Yahweh Shai's birth was handled. And when the purification, all right, according to the law of Moses, and when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem and presented him to the Lord. So Yahweh Shah's birth, all right, and life fulfilled the law of Moses, okay? When, 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 when he was born, okay, he was born into a family that did things, all right, according to the law of Moses, Leviticus 12, all right. It said when, when he was born, he was he was circumcised on the eighth day. His mother had a purification process. This was all according to the law of Moses. OK, Leviticus 12 and one. And the Lord spake unto Moses. All right. Saying, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, if a woman have conceived a seed and born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days. According to the days of, her, of the separation for her infirmity, shall she be unclean on the eighth day shall the flesh of his foreskin be circumcised and she shall continue in the blood of her purif purifying three and thirty days she shall touch no hollow thing nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled so this is how we know that Yahweh Shai one of the, the key indicators that there wasn't a virgin birth because his birth would have to fulfill this law all right and this law that we're reading is centered around if she born a seed, a male seed, all right, she would have to purify, she would circumcise the child on the eighth day, and she would have to then purify him, all right, uh, purify herself, all right, for a certain amount of days, all right, touch no hollow thing, come near the sanctuary until the days of her purification be fulfilled. And when we read it, clearly, all right, that this is what happened with that family. Yahweh Shai was born to a family that's associated with the seed of David. His father was a direct seed of the lineage of David. So, of course, they were keeping the laws, right? So if, if, if they're doing these customs to a T, all right, what would make you think that as they're in this captivity in Rome, that they would deviate from this instruction here, all right, in Exodus, the 12th chapter? All right. Exodus 12 and 2. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year unto you. All right. The Julian calendar does not acknowledge this first month 
all right, being as in the Passover and all of that. They had their idols, their holy days, their festivals. They, their weeks were, as we're going to show you, were named after numbers. All right. So, again, this is how the Jews, this is how the Israelites, all right, were keeping their months. Okay. The begin, the first month, all right, is the, the beginning of months. Okay. Shall be the first month of the year unto you. All right. And from, we know that that first month would be what? The, the new moon. Okay, the, the day one of that first month will be the new moon, as we've been showing you, Chadash. Now, let's listen to this individual. It says new moon, monthly, month, first day of the month. So let's listen to this individual so we can get some understanding on why I just went into what I went to. Okay, this is on the elder brother Karata Zaba's page, Holy Bible Defenders. Okay. Response GMS brother tries to explain the new moon to IUIC. And if you are a GMS brother, you know, there was an order given out a while back, you know, to not even go up to a camp like IUIC because they're going to be unreasonable. They're going to try to drown you out with the mic. They're going to call you a grapist. All right. And it's going to get ugly. All right. But, you know, this was done for a purpose so that we can edify. So let's just deal with this and hopefully your brothers and sisters be edified. moon is the first day of the month and it's a dark moon it's not a full moon okay the full moon comes on the second all right week of a month according to hebrew israelite customs okay we, we've established that and we're going to continue to break it down could you do a sabbath all right if the new moon is the first day of the month how else would you determine the sabbath you would have to start cart, uh, counting your six working days from the the day of the first day which is a sabbath then you have the six working days <laughs> then on the seventh day all right uh pretty much at sundown you you know you're, you're back into the sabbath point blank period all right that's the, 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 the simplest way. How else would you determine if, if the new moon is day one? How else? All right. Would you be able to track your Sabbath? All right. Listen to the reasoning and listen to what we're saying here. If day one is the new moon, we know that. OK, even if you're going and saying that the new the full moon is the, the, the new moon, which is a complete uh, farce. That's not true. How? Do you get a permanent Friday sundown, a Saturday sundown? What if the full moon comes in on a, on, a, on a Tuesday? What if a full moon comes in on a Thursday? You, you're not able to count your, your six working days leading back into that next Sabbath. All right. For that month, the Sabbath is going to always be where that new moon fell on, man. And we've, we've been breaking this down to you. And hopefully, all right, you get it. All right. But listen to this, uh, what, the, what these individuals are about to say. All right. And they're actually being a little more reasonable than some of the, the, the other members of IUIC. I don't know if he let them know he was GMS, because usually when you say you GMS. All right. Th these dudes start going crazy, man. But let's listen. A light that decreases in her perfection. So 
Yeah, because it's new, right? And when you go into the history, they blew the trumpet. They had the new moon watchers, and you wouldn't have to do that if there was a full moon. Everybody would know it was the new moon because <laughs> it would be right there, big as hell, in in the sky. <laughs> All right. Right. Anything is new when it's in its purest form. When it, you know, a baby who comes out of the rest, a new baby, right? An eighteen-year-old, uh, rusty, crusty Jake ain't no new, you know, Jake. He, he, he you know what I'm saying? We're gonna get to the point. What we telling you? Right, it said destroy the names. Of the Jesus Christ! Put the armor! Put the armor of Jesus Christ! Put the armor of God! Jesus Christ! And thank to change times and laws. See, then what they change? Times! Right! And he changed laws. That's right? right. You got to remember, look, you got to listen to y'all remember this. Now, that's scriptures talking about Esau. Esau, 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 all right, how it would defy the most high when you read Daniel the seventh chapter. Okay, so again, listen to what he's about to say so that we can then make the point and get up out of here. Because if they change times and laws, why are why are you telling why are you teaching that Israelites follow their calendar? Yahawashai, the Jews follow their calendar. The Julian calendar. When we have no record of that. Let's keep listening so you can hear it. Even though the time when Christ was here on the earth, we was going off the Roman Greco calendar, right? Okay, that's he said, when Christ was on the earth, okay, we went after a Roman Greco calendar. Now, first of all, the Greeks came before the Romans, and the Greeks didn't use the same calendar that the Romans used, okay? As you can see here, the Greeks used a loony solar calendar. They divided the year into 12 lunar months plus extra days or months. All right, and you can look it up. It's not the same as the Julian calendar, which had an eight-day week. Okay? Point blank period. Right? So, luckily, you can get into all of that. But basically, listening to what he just said, let's, let's go back and listen to what he said. Let's go back. Rewind it to about three. And he changed laws, right? Hey, 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 you gotta hey. remember, look, you gotta listen, you gotta remember this. Even through the time when Christ was here on the earth, uh -huh. we was going off the Roman Greco calendar, right? Okay, hey. that's the we was going off the Roman Greco calendar. The Romans and the Greeks had a different calendar. All right, but the bottom line is you're telling you're telling Israel that Yahweh Shai, who was perfect in the law of Moses, fulfilled the law of Moses went by another calendar outside of what Moses established that's the point I'm making all right that's what it was called the Roman, the Roman Greco it was on the Roman Greco area okay? the Roman Greco what it would be Greco Roman first of all and they did have some of the same customs all right but it, it, they didn't have the same calendar okay again the Julian calendar we can pull it up the Julian calendar, the Romans you, in, in, the, uh, in the days of the Republic used a market week calendar based on a non-denial, all right, nine-day 
Romans counted inclusively the cycle of eight days marked by the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Now show us in the scriptures where any of our forefathers at the time of Yahweh Shai who were keeping the customs called a day after H. You are, you're still going to see the first day of the week. You're still going to see the eighth day. You don't see any of our forefathers saying A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H as how they determine their weeks. The Messiah was not following after an eighth day calendar. The Romans at the time that Yahweh Shai was on the scene used an eighth day, all right, Julian calendar. So the question is, the Jews who stuck to the customs, who fought all that time from the Maccabees, you know, to keep the, the temple, you know, uh, revelant, you know, uh, uh, you know, the sacrifices, although many of them sold out. All right. The truth came out of that batch because the tents of Judah had to be saved first. The, 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 the truth and how it was continued came from. All right. The um, the circumcision that followed Yahweh Shai. That was his first batch of followers of, was of the circumcision. All right. Who ultimately uh, believed on him. Many of them rejected him. Right. Of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, who stuck to the customs. But many. All right. Uh, let's get a scripture. All right. I always get this scripture. All right. Judah. Remained faithful. All right. So though many of them went off, we have to thank Judah, Benjamin and Levi. The Lord putting the spirit on them from from the Maccabean Empire all the way up to the time. Yahweh Shai came on the scene, keeping those traditions, keeping the laws, fighting, standing firm. They didn't bow to the images and idols of the uh the uh, uh greeks and romans many of them eventually did they start selling out a lot of the leadership but again like families like you know john the baptist's uh, uh dad and mom all right they circumcised him on the eighth day they were keeping the loss so the truth came from that batch although a lot of them had become demons hosea 11 and 12 ephraim compassed me about what lies in the northern kingdom and the house of Israel with deceit, but Judah yet rule it with God and is faithful with the saints. So Judah stuck to the ways of righteousness. So you, here it is. You mean to tell me, right? Going back, you mean to tell me that Yahweh Shai, okay, who stuck, who, who who was ultimately perfect in the law of Moses, as we're going to show you, okay, deviated from the calendar that Moses said to follow and follow what he say a Roman Greco calendar. And the calendar that's being followed today pretty much came out the Gregorian calendar in the 1500s. And yes, Esau changed times and laws. He he's not presented us a calendar that ties us to our father. Point blank. Period. Listen, according to the moon, right? Right. Right. You 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 have the new moon, the first day of the month, and the week, and then you start counting your six working days. All right, then you 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 arrive back at the Sabbath and you keep doing that until the next new moon comes in. But the thing is, the new moon can come in on Esau's calendar on any of those days. The new moon can come in on the Sunday sundown. The new moon can come in on the Monday sundown. The new moon can come in on the Tuesday sundown. So that uh, according to you know the, the the what we read, that would have to dictate the Sabbath for that month. They're telling you, first of all, that the full moon is the new moon. Okay, which that doesn't make sense. But then they're telling you that. Friday sundown to Saturday sundown is the permanent Sabbath. I mean, any of you who believe in that, can you put something on a comment board to make that make sense? Let's keep listening, then we'll get some scriptures and we'll close it out. Now, let's go. Give me what you got there according to that light right there. Let's read it. Right there. So the moon is in our season. Season is another word for time, okay? So the moon, the, the, the moon is served. You got different phases of the moon. You got a blood moon, right? You got a harvest moon. Hey, the blood moon is not a, a phase of the moon. The, you have the waxing and the waning moon. This dude doesn't know what he's talking about. And it's clear by the stuttering. 
<laughs> All right. It's clear that he's just really regurgitating something that he hasn't really re he doesn't really understand. And it could be easily be cut. So Esau made the moon black. He he may he he's able to change the moon. No, the moon is an ordinance that's everlasting so that we I mean, although we're in these captivities, we can still look at it and be able to govern ourselves and be able to have a connection with our power and keep all right. The, the Sabbaths and the holy days to the best of our ability while we're in the captivity. He couldn't blow the moon up, although he's trying he's trying to block out the ordinance of the sun and the moon. Why? First and foremost, to, to keep Israel from being a nation and, and receiving mercy. Second off, he wants to keep us from our power. He wants to d d detach us from our power. Well, let's keep listening and then we'll get some more scriptures. This dude, like Apostle Tahar did a video, this dude is talking like a used car salesman. salesman saying anything to get you to buy the car. and just throwing anything out there. He said the blood moon is a part of the phase of the moon. All right, now the question is the point. The point that I want to deal with. Let's just go back and listen to it one more time. See, I remember this even through the time when Christ was here on the earth, huh? we was going off the Roman Greco calendar, right? Yes. Okay, that's that's what it was called. The Roman, the Roman Greco. Was so the Messiah, Yahweh Shai, followed. He didn't. He didn't. He deviated from Moses's order on how to keep the holy days. And was the perfect sacrifice, blameless in the law, yet he followed Esau's Julian calendar. Hmm? Which they went to uh, Egypt to perfect that calendar. Okay? Not in the sense where, you know, it was the same direct, because I believe the Egyptians used like a 10 day cal calendar, but he went to Egypt to perfect that calendar. He, he, he literally went there, all right? But anyway, what I wanted to bring out as a series of scriptures that I have here. All right, this is uh, some scriptures. I'm going to just read through them. As you can see here, I have this list. Hebrews 9 and 28. So Yahweh Shai was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. All right, without sin. Now, what is sin? Transgression of the law. If you're saying that Yahweh Shah openly disobeyed Moses' calendar, all right, because that's a law, what we read about what Moses said on how to keep those months, you're saying that Yahweh Shah followed the ways of the heathen, right? But Yahweh Shah was without sin. Hebrews 13 and 11, for the body, oh no, that ain't what I want. Let's get John 3 and 5. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins and he had the power to what cleanse all right israelites of sin all right but he himself all right and in him was no sin first john 3 and 5 and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin first peters 2 and 22 who did no sin neither was gal foul in his mouth so if you're saying he followed all right, gal is found in y'all mouth. See, y'all are teaching our people to follow the Gregorian calendar. Then you're saying that when Yahweh Shai was on the scene, they followed the Julian calendar. It's all over the place. And the bottom line is that these heathen and their rulerships have confused the times. That's what Daniel, the 25th chapter, is, is pretty much breaking down. He shall change times and laws, all right, and wear out the saints. That's what these Edomites did. So what they're presenting to us is not in line with what Yahweh Bashmi Shai ordered Moses to do and to pass down unto the generations. Point blank, period. Okay? The new moon is the first day of the month. All right. And we don't and, and Moses wasn't walking in the wilderness with a with a calendar from 7 Eleven trying to track the days. No, they used the moon and they had people dedicated to that order. All right, it was a very important part of our culture. 
okay and you had the new moon watchers because when it came in all right was when it was a dark moon all right and that first strip comes in all right then it goes to its perfection the moon was made to go in courses but the new moon the first day of the month is not a full moon okay like even somebody on the comment board said let's see if i can pull that back up all right it says during the first passover which is the, the the middle of the month a lunar eclipse occurred when the full moon blocks the sun the next day is the feast and the sabbath day this helps me stay on track the full moon comes mid-month just gotta put uh light colors first so ultimately i don't understand that part but ultimately the the you know you can we can get into the the lunar eclipse the apostle to har been going into that that itself proves as you, you know there was darkness for a certain amount of days or time okay at the time after yahweh shah's crucifixion and all of that but the bottom line is the new the full moon is the second day of the week okay point blank period and the passover comes on a full moon all right but we'll get into that another time the bottom line is what i'm trying to establish here i don't want to deviate from the point so lock you just a bunch of stuff coming into my mind but first john 3 and 5 and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin see that no sin was in yahweh shai all right he fulfilled the law what did he say in first john 5 and 17 think not that i am come to destroy the law i am come to fulfill all right he was everything we as israel needed under that first covenant in perfection he's the high priest he's the sacrifice he's the jubilee he's the unblemished lamb okay basically you're telling us he had blemish <laughs> if he followed a a, a a a calendar based upon idol worship okay it says who did first peter 2 and 22 who did no sin neither was gal found in his mouth Second Corinthians five and twenty one. For he hath made him uh, him to be sin for us who knew no sin. All right, that we might be made the uh, the righteousness of the Most High in Him. All right. So again, he knew no sin. All right, but he took on all of our sins. All right, with that sacrifice, who knew no sin. First Peter's one and nineteen. But with the we were not redeemed with you know anything else, but we were redeemed, verse 19, with the precious blood of Yahweh Shah, a lamb without blemish and without spot. See that? A lamb without blemish and without spot. Okay? So again, if he followed a Julian calendar and deviated from the the, the way Moses said to keep the the, the 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 new moon in the holy days, then hey, we got a problem. <laughs> all right hebrews 4 and 15 for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities but was at all points tempted like as we are yet without sin so yahweh shai was without sin sin is the transgression of the law all right matthew 5 and 17 think not that i am come to destroy the law or the prophets i am not come to destroy but to fulfill Luke 2 and 22, and when the days of our purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, or right, they called his name uh, Yahweh Shai, basically, and they brought him to Jerusalem. All right, so basically, Yahweh Shai's life, all right, his birth, his life, he fulfilled what was in the law of Moses to be a perfect sacrifice for us, all right, which cannot be, uh, he, he wasn't blemished. So again, if he followed all right a julian calendar that would mean that he was not perfect in the law of moses and that would mean that he did have gal that was the point of this video man okay again you can't go into the bible and substantiate that yahweh shai and the jews were using a julian calendar okay to to dictate all right because again another mistake that these individuals make all right is that they'll pull out the Gregorian calendar we use today to try to break down what was going on during the Roman Empire when the Romans did not use that Gregorian calendar. 
Gregorian calendars is 13 days. However, the difference will become 14 days in 2100. So they were two different calendars. All right, there, there's uh, the Julia, the 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 ten day, you know. But you know, we'll get into all of that at another time. I don't want to get too technical with it and confuse you, and throw you off. But when the uh, when the uh, Romans were on the scene and ruling, when Yahushua came on the scene, all right, they were following the Julian calendar. They were not following the Gregorian calendar. So why does IUIC pull out the Gregorian calendar to try to break down? They're saying that's the calendar we should follow, but then they you they go to the history of Rome and say, see, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, wasn't even using that calendar. Anyway, all right, the, 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 these men are laying in wait to deceive, man. Ephesians 4 and 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive all right in lt then we will no longer be immature like children we won't be tossed and blown about every wind of new teaching all right and it gets new every year with these guys every month there's something new okay the bishop nathaniel when we first came into the truth was never teaching that the full moon all right was the new moon they always were teaching the truth and understanding about the, 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 the new moon and the Sabbath. Not really. All right. But they weren't because they were always teaching that Friday sundown and Saturday sundown. All right. But they were never saying that the uh, full moon was the new moon. So what would happen? What's going on with all of these camps with all this new weird activity? Now Esau ain't the white man. Now the Lord don't love Jacob no more and he don't hate Esau no more. Okay. Now you got to, you know, you got to, if your unbelieving wife don't believe, you got to cast her away. If your unbelieving husband, you know, like these dudes are just going all far left. We had marriage certificates in ancient Israel. We would go to the, no, no, man. We wrote things up. All right. And we had a, a, a the token of virginity. The families agreed and wrote things down to the terms of the marriage. And they, it was between them and Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. We didn't go to our captivity. All right. And get a, a certificate of marriage. Even birth certificates, we didn't do that. So we're under a complete heathenistic system that separates us from our power. But you're starting to see these un these individuals teach doctrines that are more in line with what the heathen got going on because they're paid off, man. So we ain't supposed to be immature like children, tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like truth and that, that dude you would think if you was untrained you would be like you know he knows what he's talking about he, oh he said blood moon oh my god oh man roman greco what the hell are you talking about hopefully i'll edify it on to the next shalom